everybody and welcome to another amazing episode with my lovely, beautiful, awesome, gorgeous friend Marushka of Marushka.com and welcome to another one of our chats on Aquarius Rising Africa where we, I think today uh, we are going to definitely be talking about our hopes and our dreams for the future, not just for Africa but for the planet. For Marushka, we've got some fantastic ideas and would be really interested to hear if anyone out there would like to participate with us as well. So I think it's a great opportunity. But before we get ahead, before we go along with that, I would just like to say for those people um, who are interested, who are still interested in ordering some of Marushka's range, um, please do so. And uh, before you, uh, you can just put in the, Marushka, do they just put Aquarius rising? Um, there's, a, the, there's a little message box, then they yes. can just put Aquarius rising in there. Yes, thank you. Okay, so that'll be wonderful. So you can just uh, say that you've uh, obviously heard about her on Aquarius rising. And I'm just going to say as well, and I know Marushka, you want to say this as well at some point, or may you know, you get a 20 euro, a euro voucher if you're a first time um, orderer. I don't want to say subscriber, but orderer of the marushka.com range. So really it's, um, as you've seen the, these past few weeks, it's absolutely beautiful. It's linen, it's versatile, it's earth friendly, it's eco friendly, it's human friendly, it's animal friendly. It is skin friendly. <laughs> What other friendlies are there, Marushka? <laughs> Earth friendly, which is, um, you know, the very important. Yeah, absolutely. Definitely. So it's it's friendly um, in just every possible way. So as I said, if you guys want to go and order your first time outfits or um, articles of the uh, the Marushka.com range, please just use the word Aquarius Rising. Um, in the little comment section. And I can assure you, you won't be disappointed by what you will see. Anyway, so we're gonna move along because I think today is a great day to talk about our hopes and dreams and not, not just for us personally, most definitely not, um, but for the planet, you know, just such a beautiful vision. I mean, Marushka and I, as you know, we've spoken about before, we've known each other for many, many years um from namibia days already and i think that must be at least 17 or 18 years now marushka right 17 years 17 wonderful years yes. <laughs> Many more to has, go. <laughs> yes absolutely absolutely we're gonna be having amazing um years still to follow and i think now especially is such an exciting time because for what the future of this planet holds, you know, and for what's the, what the possibilities are of what we can create on this new earth. So I'm going to hand over to you right now because I feel like I'm jabbering on you. And I know that the viewers definitely want to hear from you more than they want to hear from me. I think they get a little bit tired of me sometimes. <laughs> so, so I think I'm going to hand over to you and just to sort of put this vision out there and as I said before just if anyone is interested in participating with us because that's a great idea that we've had is if there's there have to be people out there that have the similar vision and I couldn't think of a better platform maybe than this um, to actually talk about it and see how we can bring people together because this really is the time Aquarius the age of Aquarius where Aquarius loves to bring people together and unite and consolidate and collaborate and just with a, with a common vision. So over to you, gorgeous woman. <laughs> Hello, everyone. <laughs> so we decided today to speak about dreams. And although yes. Marushka.com is one of the dreams um, that we have established, um, and the, also the way we're working, it's very different. So we are really pioneering a new way ahead, which none of us know how it works, what, what will happen, what could happen. But we are confident that at any business we set up now, 
is about people first and about uh, caring and sharing and education and there needs to be a shift of focus that you do it because you really feel from the heart and it's not all about uh, money. And the second dream we have is to have an interactive um, function and meaningful venture uh, that would include manufacturing, permaculture, gastronomy, healing, yoga, creative hubs, and small apartments. And I would call that a sanctuary. That is the word I would use for this purpose. And um, I don't know if you are familiar with the small town principle. Uh, you can look it up as well. Uh, it's from Michael Tellinger. He is South African actually. And uh, it's also called the Ubuntu principle. Yeah. You might have heard from about it. Um, yep. so the minimum people you need to, the thing is you can design these sort of collaborations or, or new ways of life um, by creating a community and then building something like this, this hub of interactivity within the community. So the minimum people you would need for the smallest project like this would be between five and 7,000 people. And once you've got this established, you can run, you can roll it out to other countries as well. And this is what, what the small town principle is also doing. And of course they would help you, but of the sanctuary, um, you would incorporate, we would incorporate first of all the factory and let's not call it factory anymore because we want to do manufacturing. Let's call it workshop, okay? It's a much more creative yeah. word for it. And it's not, when you think of factory, you always think these long lines and- Yeah, and horrible, this horrors. <laughs> yes. yes, this yeah. is not what we want. Um, I saw a factory, and and isn't it you, you just you just think you just think pollution. I mean, I remember as a kid, we used to drive uh, as a family. I remember we we used to go to Port Elizabeth, and we lived on the farm. So we were on our way to Port Elizabeth, and there was this factory, and and I remember also doing like uh, when we started school, um, learning to write the factory pattern, which was this kind of thing. And I remember That's this factory. Y yes, exactly. That's the emoji for <laughs> exactly. <It's> terrible. <laughs> and we, we we would we would be driving to Port Elizabeth, and we would always go past this one particular factory that looked like that, or in my mind at least, I remember it looking like that, with this black grey smoke just coming out of it. It's just like horrendous. If you think back now, it's like wow. It's so not what we were, what was good for us. And really, if we look at it now, I love the idea of having a workshop environment. You know, it kind of gives me the feeling of, let's say, a big room, a big space, almost like a shed. And a lot of people, maybe that one at that table, that one at that table, communicating, talking. One is doing that. Another one is doing something different. I like that idea very much. Yeah, sounds good. Feels good. Feels good, eh? So you have yeah. a work orientated setup, which is much smaller for the purpose for producing Maroshka.com. Uh, next, next to the, the workshop, you would do something um, which looks like a shop, but at the same time, it's uh, also um, a studio and mm -hmm. it's also your dispatch and it's also your stock take apartment. So it's, it will be selling maroshka.com, but um, and educating and all of that that goes with it, that should go with it, but um, you would use it for multifaceted purposes. So we're not just talking of a shop. Then with that, you bring in a, a bistro, 
Um, and the main thing about this sanctuary is to have to be completely off the grid. So you would have your own electricity and your own water. And to, to do that and to make that work properly, we would incorporate permaculture into it. So you would be living on, a, working on a piece of land, the size would be about between two and three hectares to build this sort of thing. Um, and you would uh, uh, do permaculture because that would um, supply the bistro, first of all, and it would supply whoever wants to live in the smaller apartments on the property. So wow. you see that whole uh, ecological system permaculture to with the buildings integrated so that you can work and move and use freely um, and it's healthy. You, and that way you can recycle water. You can use gray water for the, the plants, for the garden part. Yeah. And you can use the clean water for drinking and, and you know, for uh, human yeah. consumption. Um, so you would establish that first so that you have- That sounds, own, yeah, own that way. sounds amazing because, you know, the, if you look at it again, two to three hectares is really not that much land, right? Yeah. So I think there are a lot of people on this planet who possibly have small holdings or even have that amount of land available where they can start and create something new and yeah. just you know i think what 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 i'm what what this is it's really about a desire to do something different and to do something constructive rather than destructive yeah. so this this really and you have as you say the workshop area um more in the background and then you have the shop slash training area slash i love the bistro idea um and it immediately brings to mind you know what i saw the other day as well just when you're speaking about that someone had started a human library so you actually go to these human libraries and you actually meet with different people and you have half an hour or an hour discussions with them so instead of having going in there and and um, reading books, you actually have a connection with someone for just half an hour. You sit across the little table from each other, maybe share a, a cup of coffee or a cappuccino. In my case, definitely would be a latte of sorts. Um, <laughs> and you actually meet people from different scenarios, different different parts of the world, different life experiences, and you actually connect because we are all human beings. And one thing, I mean, I've been a healer now for 20 years. And one thing I know for sure is that most people just want to be heard, just to speak. And, and, and you can be a listener, absolutely. I, I get that there are a lot of people that are listeners out there too, but we can't deny that we also like to be heard and it doesn't matter what it is so to hear someone else's story and to be heard and you never know what connections you could establish so i can imagine i can just see that little picture coming together there as well that would be beautiful actually so you start this uh, human bistro library <laughs> i think that'll be awful awesome mommy not awful awesome <laughs> with the workshop the bistro the shop um, and then you go and, and the permaculture, the, the, uh, you will have your own vegetables and, and fruits, whatever can grow, will be growing. And then your own recycling of water, electricity. Then you can start incorporating um, creative hubs. So um, spaces integrated for uh, art uh, exhibitions, um, for, create, for, for creative activities, for teaching and people can uh, come all over the world. Anyone who is either trained or intuitive about teaching art or whatever, they can teach, they can stay for a while, they can move on. So you always have this exchange of craft, exactly. of information, wow. 
you know, mm. and and then you have your healing section uh, integrated again, which is, uh, abs and this is very important because uh, worldwide, I, I'm an empath and I feel really that people are very, very tired. Mm -hmm. And you want to help these people. And uh, first of all, you, you can start with um, healing, music healing, Chantal, that what you does with the bowls. Um, you can have uh, uh, foot massages working on reflexology. You can have uh, rooms where people can come and just talk to you or to other healers who pass by, who helps. Um, out and um, and then you have uh, um, I mean I had a um, here in Seychelles uh, on La Dique I had a massage next to the beach all she did was uh, like a canopy with a bed music and then these oils but you could hear the sea and yeah uh, we are so we've got six senses and um, yeah we have almost forgotten how to use them. Totally. Yeah. So totally. we need to reconnect on a very basic, um, uh, something that brings us together, which is life, which is experience, which is present. Exactly. Exactly. And, then, and I want, sorry, sorry, if I can just say something here as well. You know, what, 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 what's happened in the past, um, and I'm going to say especially these last maybe 30 years, is we have become so disconnected from nature, from this planet, from each other. We, I mean, if you just look at the major cities in the world, look at these high rise buildings with God knows how many floors that most people don't even feel what it feels like to be grounded anymore, you know? So we become this disconnected from nature, disconnected from earth, um, uh, 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 species living in little cardboard boxes like that not even realizing the importance of nature and connection and having your feet on the ground and mostly you're going from one high-rise building your apartment into another high-rise building which is your office or whatever mm -hmm. and so seldom enjoying what it is you know I mean I've recently, and, and we, we, we both know this beautiful client who felt the same way. All she really wanted was the high-rise buildings until she started connecting literally in the last two weeks to nature, to the rocks, to trees. I mean, she lives in this incredible place. And I mean, she says to me, I put my hand on the rock and I felt the heartbeat of the rock. I mean, she was absolutely amazed that rock has a heartbeat and that tree has a spirit. And, you know, of course, we're not going to know these things if we're not open to it. It's the same. I mean, I teach animal communication or animal whispering workshops. I teach workshops where you connect to nature and stuff. And it's amazing how when people are unaware of this, um, how disconnected they are. And then we wonder why our health is so bad globally. And then we wonder why the likes of Bill Gates and, and Anthony Fauci, and let's, let's not even mention, well, we can mention one more Soros, <laughs> um, you know, can, can actually just click their fingers and in a heartbeat, they've got the most of the world bowing down to their ridiculous desires. So when we reconnect and we go and we enjoy spaces and places like this, that's really going back to our, our inner calling, our inner spirit, our inner, our inner power, you know, our inner strength. So I think that this is really something very beautiful um, to, to seriously look into and to seriously start putting out there because this is really what the new era is about. It's really what the new age is about. It's calling for that connection. It's calling for us to, to go outside and to breathe in that good ass prana, baby. 
to breathe it in and to put our put our feet in the ocean. You know, you can see I'm a little bit to summer yeah i spent a beautiful day on the beach yesterday getting my feet back in the sea getting my sand back in the toes you know sort of sand back under my toes again there's nothing better than that feeling it's just brings in health it's just wonderful and i think the more of us who who, who are aware of that the better our life is going to be the more connected we're going to be the healthier we're going to be and as you say with the permaculture stuff growing our own foods, recycling. It's just getting back to exactly where we need to be, right? Yes. And then, you know, when I talk about healing, I d please get the picture of a spa out of your head because that's not what I'm talking about. The yeah. spas worldwide is, uh, is not built on a sanctuary, sacred space, healing space principle. It's little rooms with treatments okay so that's not what i'm talking about i'm talking about the real healing about letting people and giving them the time and space and talk to them what i would what i would just like to say also please people mustn't be confused by the word healing because you know the so often we think about healing as being broken and needing to be fixed and maybe we feel broken and maybe we feel that we need to be fixed but really the word healing simply means bringing myself back into balance any disease in the body any anything that's wrong in the body anything whether you are whether you having cancer whether you having some kind of incurable dis hyphen ease because that's really what it is that is incurable according to medical standards um oops whether you are having anything like that um in your uh, you know in your body or a mental disorder of sorts it's really your body crying out for balance Yes. So what we, what healing really is, is bringing yourself back into balance. Because when we start looking at how energy works, you know, anything, I mean, I always say, if you look at energy like the hair. So if we look at energy, like we can look at, see it as gazillion little vibrating strands of hair and all with vibrating gold. And it's like a, like a waterfall, if you will. So the minute that that is flowing and in harmony, you are healthy and you are in tune with your source or God or whatever it is you choose to call it. But the minute uh, you are out of tune or stressed, it's like the hair being knotted up. And then it's about needing to, and then of course the energy can't flow through those areas. So it's about then just allowing yourself to relax. People so underestimate the power of relaxation and of finding their peace. Because when you are at peace with yourself, that is the place that you create from. That is the place that you manifest from. And so when you are manifesting from your power, because your place of peace is your place of power, when you're manifesting and creating from that space, everything in your life is good. You cannot make mistakes when you do that because a you're probably meditating or you're tuning in or aligning with source or praying and prayer i always say prayer is dialogue with your source meditation is listening to your source and that would be the first two things that we need to bring ourselves back into alignment with and when we do that we then create from a very different and a very beautiful place and that's the place of power that's the place of peace and that's where you create your success and that is very important to realize. <laughs> and yeah. then to, to also, uh, materials that will be used to build this should be local materials and should be a combination of things. And one can also use, um, what are they called? Um, uh, containers. You can also use containers together with, with uh, structures, light steel structures. So you create uh, spaces like in a staircase or whatever to do exhibitions. You don't have a room for this yes. and a room for that. And nothing must be higher than two stories because when you go higher than two stories, you lose contact with earth, with the yes. ground. 
Absolutely. Uh, and that comes back to our friend with the high rising buildings. And you know, here in Seychelles, the, you, there was a, a rule that no, no building should be higher than a palm tree. And no building is higher than a palm tree until they discarded this rule about 10 years ago and they started building horrible skyscrapers. And it yeah. stands out like a sore thumb. But yeah. on the average, nothing higher than two stories. Um, so, and then you have um, reading, I call them reading islands. They should be integrated everywhere because sometimes you just want to go, take a book and read mm -hmm. or just sit and listen to silence or talk to people, you know? So, and then you, you, bring, you can also bring in yoga. So if you go to a place like that, to a sanctuary for a day, you can connect, you can eat, you can breathe, you can get closer to yourself. You can be fully present in the presence, which is the best present you can give to yourself every exactly. moment of presence. <laughs> exactly, presence, the power <laughs> of presence is phenomenal. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah and that, that importance. And, um, and then you will, once this is established and even while it gets established, you train people. You train them in the bistro, you train them in the design room, you train them in selling in the shop, you train them in gardening, permaculture, which is the future of all farming worldwide is permaculture. It's not yes. bio, that's past bio, it's more advanced. It is, uh, and there are so many uh, references on this. And the reason for, for permaculture to bring up any um, uh, substantial amount of, of, of um, harvest you need at least three acres. So two hectare or three hectare with the whole thing in, incorporated will be very good to actually bring up harvest to supply the bistro or the two bistros or, yes. you know, to, to the people can. And then the, 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 the containers, you can make small little homes out of them but with view onto the gardens or to, you know, you can play with this. And of course, the whole thing needs to be designed from a Feng Shui point of view. We will still talk about Feng Shui some other time, huh, Chantal? Not yes, now. Yes, definitely. definitely. We will talk about Feng Shui because that's all, again, it's about balance. The, the basic concept yes. of Feng Shui is the balance between you and the objects around you in this realistic life we live every day. That is what Feng Shui really is. And again, with the whole less is more concept, right? Yeah, that anyway, because then you yeah. have to, to think and to be, and um, you will have, when you have less, you actually have a much, much more time. Yes. You have exactly. much more time to to do nothing. And it's an art to do nothing. Yeah, it really absolutely. Is. <laughs> and then you really, because it kind of works then on the natural principle, yes. you know, which is principle of the law of attraction. Yes. Now, you know, it's like Nikola, I mean, if we understand uh, Nikola uh, Tesla, who said, if you want to understand how the universe works, you got to think frequency, vibration, and sound. Yes. And really everything you as a person in this body are created of frequencies, vibrations and sounds. And that's and why you should live in an environment with frequency, vibration and sound. Exactly. But not noise. <laughs> noise is not a sound. Exactly. Exactly. So, so and then we understand when, when we understand that the body literally is like a magnet. And if we can think about a magnet. It permeates this invisible energy field around it that attracts and repels. Now, your body does exactly the same thing. So you either then, if when you're in harmony and in tune with your own frequency, sound, and vibration, 
you know you can i always when i when i'm teaching my workshops and stuff i always say to them think about your body is it is it playing is it like a beautiful is it like an orchestra playing a beautiful tune right now or are you clang 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 your way okay you can think about that because we really know that that's how we're feeling on the inside or not so when we understand that that's really how it works and law of attraction states energy will always attract its same vibration in other words like attracts like i mean we understand that concept and as we say in african sweat suk sweat okay so when we really just understand that understand that every moment of every day you are attracting and creating and manifesting into your life that which you're putting out there and it's really so simple when we get that and also understanding that your frequency is at its most comfortable when you are at peace and when you have space and freedom around you now freedom is not about running around and burning buildings and breaking statues down demanding that you be heard right freedom is that place of beautiful it's that inner sanctuary that inner place of peace where we can read where we can meditate where we can pray where we can feel in tune with our environment and i you know really it, it's just a beautiful feeling there are certainly days i i mean i've been teaching this for 20 odd years now and there are certainly days that <laughs> I have the clang clang gang on as well. <laughs> but you know, it's all about then allowing yourself that space to come back to your center and create, really literally create that which your heart desires. And you can only do so when you're in tune with your own frequency, sound and vibration. So that's yeah. fundamentally what we're saying. And that's, I think, what the feng shui principle also um, is speaking about. When you're in tune, your environment will be in tune. So give yourself the space, give yourself the, 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 the peacefulness in your environment, which I think is really beautiful. Mm. And then within it, you, you create space for... Um, impromptu concerts, theater, uh, you know, mm. uh, entertainment, because I think entertainment will change quite a lot going forward. Yes, absolutely. You, you're going to have, you know, the, and people are very talented. It's going to go more sort of uh, to street, street entertainment. Yes, I was going to say sort of groups out there because we're going to be yeah. more peace and so not as much criminals running around. Yes. You know, um, so so we'll feel safer, and when we feel safer, we're going to attract safer. And I love that idea, like doing the street stuff and dancing, flowing, yeah. yoga, tai and chi, all, all um, these things. Uh, in Zurich, um, it was last year, October. There was a group of of dancers, seven or eight dancers, and they did um, a play. An uh, acrobatic dance play in the Bahnhofstraße in, in Zurich. And uh, it was so beautiful. And they were just collecting, collecting money after their play. And that's how they went from one town to the next. And, and, and uh, they were uh, uh, collecting for some other purpose. They actually said that as well. There. Um, but it was just so beautiful and these people are so talented and you don't see this in your organized shows in a very uh, elaborate theater. You, the, yeah. these, you see it on the street. It's raw, it's there, it's passion, it's, it's alive. It's, and how beautiful are these, are these street artists? I mean, you know, when you yes. see these guys playing guitar on the streets and women, I mean, I'm, I'm referring to both and you see these people, how often, I mean, do you just see these people getting up and dancing? I mean, the other day I posted something on Facebook. It was amazing. This young guy, I would have put him maybe in his mid twenties, maybe early thirties, somewhere around there playing guitar. And then this cool old dude, man, like really cool with a beard and everything. And absolutely, you could see he was a mover and a rocker and a shaker in his day. And the two of them, they're standing in the street collaborating and just really enjoying 
music and life and soul and energy and connection because that's really what it is it's the connection and i'm so excited for that seriously i want to be around for the next hundred years i can't see myself dying anytime soon yeah. i'm not gonna age i'm gonna regress and i think that's us right we we're yeah. getting younger as the years go by it's <laughs> I want to be in like 50 years at least because I still have things here. <laughs> Lots of things to do. Yes. Thank like, goodness me. And then I quickly want to reincarnate again. I don't want to be and I want to be big already, you know? <laughs> yeah, yeah. And um so yeah, this 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 concept, the setup, and um if people are interested, please speak up because uh our and then you would you would set up an administration of some kind to coordinate, okay? Um, not not decision makers. The decision makers stays with the people investing in this in, in the scheme. They are the management is purely administrative. So you know we take the pyramid and swap it around turn it upside down exactly so you yeah. put the you put the you put the the the, the point at the bottom and the broader mm. spectrum at the top because really yeah. it's about the it's people all, making all the same. This, yes exactly yeah. it's about but um yeah so that things can go along and uh, yeah and and you know i think uh, egos will become much smaller in the future hopefully otherwise things yes. like this you can't build it up if yes, if absolutely. Strong but, egos. But but yes. what's nice with that is that you know is that we all and it goes back to what I was saying actually early on is about we all want to be heard. We all have opinions. We all we all want to be understood. We all want to we all want to have our idea out there or put into this this thing. But it's about communication, and I think when we are connected a to ourselves, we understand that about the next person as well. So we're willing to listen and we're willing to integrate and we're willing to collaborate. And I think that's what really, for me, the age of Aquarius is about as well. You know, it's about the, the ability to listen, to connect, to collaborate and to work together as a unique individual in a unified way. So we're all unique, but we're working together in a unified way. So for me, that's what it's about. I, I see that like the Lotus. You have the lotus yeah. flower and each little leaf inside, it's each one of us. And we're all individuals and we all have yes. massive contribution to make to the wholeness of existence. Exactly. And, and yeah, and then this thing could be rolled out once one is established and it's working, um, you know, on, on that small world basis because what you have to do is you, you have to give your plan, your idea. And, um, and if you read more about it, the Ubuntu small world um, uh, concept, for the working unity, which is this creative interactive hub sanctuary of, of healing of creativity and of life, life source, it's actually a life source in itself, um, everyone contributes a certain amount of hours, which yes. you have to contribute to. And it's very yes. little, something like three hours a day or something, it's very little. And um, to, to make it work collectively. And that's the beauty of it. You, it. you will have something that works, you will have food, you will have water, you have electricity, and we are all working together for the same purpose yes yeah absolutely and i love it it sounds really i think honestly this is a this is such, <laughs> yes i absolutely think so and i think this this model of moving forward can only succeed and especially when you have like-minded people contributing to it so yeah wonderful Guys and girls, we really are asking for you to step forward if you yourself can see yourself being involved with this kind of concept. 
and that we can work together and collaborate in a unified way. Um, so really, I'm going to ask Marushka, I'm going to get, again, put your contact details below so that if there's anyone who wants to reach out and can see the value of this kind of living, then please reach out and let's start getting this, you know, these wheels in motion and let's start making this happen because right now many people are talking about it and I, I know some people have already started this and are very pretty much living off the grid but it it's the it's it's too few still mm. so i think we're all waiting for someone to do it many of us are waiting for someone to do it and then we kind of get on the bandwagon but i'm saying let's be the change we want to see so let's initiate the change let's create it let's make it happen so yeah if there's yeah, any one of you hmm? Chantal, I'll also give you the link of Small uh, Small World. Yes, um, that'll be great. Ubuntu, so that people can also read into that, um, because one would need help. And yes, I mean that. I've got no honey money. <laughs> no uh. money. <laughs> so <laughs> you pull this off, but um, you, with yeah, like you said. The, like with like-minded people working for the bigger purpose and better life and abundance, definitely yeah. uh, you make will, it happen. You only get this when you work together as communities. Absolutely, which is and very always important. exactly, yeah. and with our uniqueness and our individuality still there. So each person is contributing their strength, their uniqueness, their value, and it's the it's not the pyramid like that anymore it's the upside down one yeah. so it's really about the people the communities deciding what works you know and i mean i can see it even growing into like the own healthcare system you know um decision makers within the community you know and i really think that's what our world needs to be coming is smaller communities and self-governing little systems Mm -hmm. where you know we 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 all understand that to steal and to murder and to hurt and to maim doesn't serve anyone so i think yeah. it's you know wonderful for us to actually let's pioneer these things let's make it happen and things like yeah. mass production will also start falling apart yeah happily okay. happily and happily so. start teaching um Design, uh, I call them new earth designers. Can't wait to start teaching new earth designers who looks at resources, kindness to, to our planet and also beneficial uh, uh, to people. Because yeah. in all businesses, there are people and a customer is not a customer. It's a person with a feeling. Yeah, exactly. And, and they are all individuals and they are all beautiful. And um so it's about enhancing and it's all frequencies and and energy flowing it's not you know people can you as an individual you can wear what you want to how you want to and when you want to because it's you and you are perfect within the bigger picture absolutely that's, that's the true expression um so yeah it would be great if to start teaching you know, and guiding people to find the best in them, the best within. So you, you don't just teach, you guide them to find themselves, to find their own uh, unique purpose and higher purpose in this world. Yes. I, I couldn't think of anything better. And I really think that is so in line with the new era we're moving into now. So let's do it. Let's, let's get this happening, guys and girls, and let's get it moving. So, wow, my beautiful friend, as always, it's so lovely to talk to you. <laughs> really, really, really. I can't wait to hug and squeeze you so tight <laughs> in March. <laughs> yeah, it, it, uh, I really miss uh, the factory. Um, it's still a factory. Uh, it's yeah. not because uh, they don't just 
the, you know, the, the factory belongs to Simon, but he, 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 he doesn't just do Marushka.com because we are very small. He does uh, yeah. mainstream, stuff I call there, them yeah. the mainstreamers now. So the mainstream yeah. is mass productions, all of this, you know, that's still there, but I think it will change uh, very quickly. Yeah. Already Most at is closing and, um, you Most know, Zara, uh, H&M, they are changing and yeah, you can't, you know, the cheap clothes, the, you know, it's actually a very interesting concept, cheap clothes. Um, they are really not cheap. Somewhere a person is paying with their lives for it. Yeah, absolutely. And There's nothing cheap about that. We always had clothes to, to select from for ourselves as individuals. And then through marketing, it was decided that you need much more and you need cheap clothes. If we produce a lot, you you have cheap clothes and you throw them away and it's all, the, it created this throwaway society. And at some other t stage, people decided this is okay. Yeah, absolutely. And it's okay. Absolutely, absolutely. And, and it comes also from yourself, your own self-worth, you know, you, you have your own self-worth, you have uh, value for the next person, you share your work, which you value to another person. There's nothing cheap about it. This is, you know, taking your yeah. power. Back. But by being exactly. and, and running on a child or, you know, person working in those huge factories uh, on the back of them, this is, this is, this is ridiculous, no? And it has to stop. It really has to stop, especially with the amount of child labor. I mean, our kids have been so abused on so many levels, not just in the tunnels and with the adrenochrome harvesting and the most revolting, disgusting things, but also just in the way that we've turned them into little slaves in so yeah. many areas on this planet. Yeah, uh, uh, H&M cool. got a couple of lawsuits against them because they didn't honor all this cheap production in India and mainland China. Wow. And, uh, one of the, the uh, lawsuits were actually a factory in um, India where the adults had to wear pampers so that they don't go onto the toilet for the whole day. They must produce. And then you have this picture of chickens that must produce to lay eggs or you know what they do with, with animal farming in mass production anything in mass production is not is not a healthy setup can't be it's, no it's it's definitely not but again that's the way i would and we've allowed our world to become that so mm. we've got to allow it now to be you know to be uncreated because by supporting chain stores like that we supporting that's what we're paying for you know so good okay beautiful lady it's been wonderful to chat to you. We'll catch up with you next week again. And guys and girls, we will be posting the link, the, all the links, in fact, for yeah, marushka.com. Um, yeah, to for, for those of you who are still wanting to order the clothing range online, um, using the, the Aquarius the, Rising. Uh, yeah. Sorry? Just to say the in the message box, just write Aquarius Rising. Yeah. And remember, you have a 20 euro uh, discount voucher for first time users. That's a lot, especially when you're South African. My word. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, hopefully, one day our exchange rates won't be that, there won't be such a huge difference anymore. It's just like, it's ridiculous. I mean, how the monetary systems are so different in different parts of the world. Anyway. Beautiful to see you again. And then we'll post all the links in, in the in the section below um, to get hold of Marushka and for whatever else that we're going to be posting. So take good care of yourself, beautiful woman. And we will talk okay. again in a week's time. <laughs> and all of our beautiful viewers, thank you so much. Um, and if you haven't given Aquarius Rising Africa a like, a subscribe, and a share yet, please do so. Follow us on Facebook, follow us on Twitter. We're certainly going places and be lovely if you joined us. And
especially awesome for those of you who can see the value in these types of collaborations. Please let's get together and please let's talk about it. Okay, love you all madly. Take good care. See you next time. Uh -huh. <laughs>